So now I clean this up. And um, now I'm gonna go over it a little bit to reframe the skeletal part or the structural part. And I'm gonna put the muscles over it, right? So stir it cage here, cleaner, right? A little bit cleaner. We need to know where the ribcage is, where the costal arch, the sternum, and all this stuff. The side of the face is straight. This one is straight and this side is turning, right? see the joint we don't see the joint here but we can see more or less where the joint could be right here how the leg is connecting with the with the hips so um here the calves so much cleaner right much cleaner and then this is now the lower leg here and the calves So what I would like to do now is, this is, I clean this up. Um, and um, now I would like to start blocking in some volume. Maybe we start with the leg, I right? Start with the leg because, see what we see here? See this line here? Remember what that is? Right. That's, yeah, that's the adductor, right? And, and this line is sartorius. See that? The line of the sartorius, right? See that? Of course, that's a different angle, but still, uh, I see a peak here and on one side, it goes down this way. Remember this curve in here? That's the abductors here. And then that's the sartorius and that's the quadricep. That's the quadricep on the other side. Very right, good. So so now from here, we go here, right? Not at the, at the end of the, uh, uh, the thigh, but here. And this starts compared to the rib cage about here. Now cut the diagonally. And that would be a sartorius and this is the adductor, right? So, which means that I'm gonna have the volume of the vastus medialis here, right? That's the vastus medialis. So that's the vastus medialis. That, see that? That's, that's, this is it. That is the, um, uh, the goose foot here, and this is the sartorius over the knee. And that's the goose foot. See that? So as you can tell, um, even in a, in a quick drawing like this, there's a great um, exhibition of anatomical you know, knowledge, right? We're not showing off by saying he, the mark, the drawing are informed by the anatomical knowledge that these guys were uh, practicing, practice dissection and et cetera, studying anatomy since, uh, since they were little kids in, a, in, a, in the academy of the Bottega, right? So that's the vastus lateralis here, right? And that, see that here? That's the tendon of the bicep here. So this is the vasto lateral, you see that? That goes to the patella. And that is the tendon of the bicep that goes to the head of the fibula. So vasto lateralis goes to the patella, so the patella is gonna be here. And the tendon of the bicep goes now here to the head of the fibula. So I had one one that one day. Uh, it uh, was a in graduate school. This is graduate school. It was a professor that said, "Oh, do you really think that the Renaissance artists were doing all this stuff, or layering the muscle and studying anatomy?" He said, "Yes." <laughs> I didn't say anything because, right? But just look at this. Of course, they were doing it. And then there are drawings of Raphael. 
showing um, all this, the stage described by um, Alberti, right? Blocking in first the skeleton and then blocking in the flesh and blocking in everything. So that uh, statement struck me really as, I don't know, ignorant. And I, I, I like this professor very much, he's very, but somehow um, this idea of um, um, approaching art like this with uh, a deep knowledge on a subject, right, is um, is not really well welcomed in, uh, by some artists where the expressive part should be should be privileged, right, and um, without really having too many rules. But uh, but we're talking about Renaissance. We're not talking about today. So of course they were doing it. That's where the Great Revolution is is what about. And on the re reviewing, revisiting the whole world, right, through the direct experience, and that's what they were doing. So now here we have the Iliac crest, right? It, it's under that, right? So but we can more or less position it, right, intuitively here. And um, we would have here the gluteus medius. And that's the gluteus maximus. And that is the vasto lateralis. The rectus femoris must be in between. This is the dimple here, right? This dimple here is this dimple here. It's created by the depression between the tessartoris and the tensor fasciolata. So there's a dimple in there. Why, why do I want to know where the dimple is? Because from the dimple, the rectus femoris comes out and goes through the patella. So when I see the dimple, I can start the rectus femoris from here down to the patella. So from here down to here, that's the rectus femoris here. That's the vastus lateralis, it goes here, and that is the vastus medialis that goes down like that. So I will skip, I will skip the the calves in here, or we could block them in because I see see this bump in here is the gastrocnemius, this is soleus, gastrocnemius soleus. But let's let's leave it alone for now and keep going back up along the leg, right? So this is the costal arch. Uh, this is the serratus, this is the scapula, that's the deltoid. See that? One, two, three, four. Quite, quite, quite interesting. Right? So on this spacing here, we need to block in the deltoid, right? So the deltoid starts from, see that, the deltoid here and here, right? See the deltoid there, right? Actually, it goes past that, it goes past the level of the rib cage here. And then, so the deltoid, one, scapula, two, serratus, three, and rib cage, four. One, two, three, four. So, again, if I look at this, I see all sorts of lines and bumps and cross-hatching and this and that. I'm going to get lost. I'm going to get lost with that. So if we just look at the patterns, right, what, what is that line? Well, that line represents a specific volume that has a specific relationship with other volumes, right? And in this case here, all this volume here are, let's say, connected by this pattern that they create, right? They are part of this pattern of curve. So rib cage serratus, scapula, and then deltoid. So the serratus eventually has this digitation, see that? Here, 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 and, that's the, and that is the serratus, the back of the serratus, right? This is the rib cage, and that's the scapula. That's a trapezius. So now here we would have, we don't see it because it's covered with the cloth, but if this is the nipple, see that, if that's the nipple, 
uh, it means that the sternum is on the margin here. It's here, right? It's here. And the nipple is under there, right? But, but, so the sternum is basically on the profile here, but we see now the torsion, right? The torsion of the rib cage is turned away and the hip this that way and the hips are turned this way. So now we see here where the genitals are about here. So I know now that from the sternum, from here, uh, at the bottom of the sternum, I have the lineal, but which has to go here. So now that is the torsion of created by uh, the, the two segments that, that move uh, or, or rotate in different direction, right? One from the other one. So that's the linea alba, right? And now if I see the linea alba, I know that this is going to be the sternal oblique. That's the inguinal ligament. And I might not be able to see um, I might not be able to see, uh, in fact, I don't see the sternal oblique on the other side, right? So, so that. 